Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with an absolutely fabulous and totally unexpected disc that seems to have popped out of French Universal, sort of, kind of. I mean, yeah, basically, it's this. The Legend of John Williams. I, it's a beautifully put together, you know, it's got like these nice things with pictures and 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 stuff and it's so smartly assembled and there's a big booklet in it and and wow i'm amazed by it it's a little pricey but it's recordings of his work from 1960 to, to 2022 and there's just it's the a fabulous retrospective of his work as an artist and composer and i think it really shows him off for the great figure in the world of film and also some concert music and other things um, that he truly is. So let's look at what's in here. So it's original original soundtracks, concert works, and songs, um, 20 CDs, 60 years of film music, 373 tracks, 22 hours of music, a 44-page booklet, including an original interview with John Williams, photos and stills, testimonials by Oliver Stone, Jean-Jacques Anneau, and Alan Bergman. Wow. I mean, let's just go through it and see what's in here. I mean, if you're a film music person, you're going to really want this. And if you're not a film music person, you may want this because it gives you a wonderful overview of his career without having to collect the bazillion original soundtracks and things like that. You get like sort of the best bits. It's very well chosen. I mean, just nicely curated. So so let's 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 look and see here. First, you have a Boston Pops highlights. OK. Well, we know what that is on CDs one and two, but it's still, it's nice to have. You've got bits of, of Star Wars things and Superman and Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And then the NBC News theme, you know, that thing. Um, if We Were in Love instrumental, March from 1941, Jane Eyre, um, Liberty Fanfare, America, The Dream Goes On, Midway March, The Witches of Eastwick. That was a wonderful score. Olympic fanfare and theme, Home Alone, um, just just really, really nifty. <laughs> so that's those first two discs. And, you know, you get like nice, nice photos and they're in these these hardcover sort of, you know, sleeve things, which actually are, are rather nicely designed to keep the discs in, um, but also be, well, are they extractable? Wait a minute. We have to see. I have my... CD extraction kit. Wait a minute. Let's see here. Uh, I've got my... Here they are. Yes. This is it. Some of you haven't seen it yet. This is the ultimate CD extractor device. Um, for those of you who uh, don't recognize it, what this is is a false eyelash applicator that you can find in inexpensively in any drugstore. I've got like dozens of different things in here that I use to get CDs out of recalcitrant packaging. So let's see how recalcitrant this packaging is. So here's the CD, right? It's right there. And what you do is, let's see if I can do this in reverse, it's difficult, is you just take this and you stick your applicator around the CD. Um, if I've got it, wait a minute, here we go. And you should be able Oops, to pull it out. Let me do it. Let me do it front ways. Because it's just it's just too awkward. Oh yeah, that's really that's really stuck in there. Okay. There we go. There we go. It gets it moving and you can pull it out easily enough. So yes, this worked quite well. Um, they are firmly ensconced in their thingies here, but a little bit of uh technical wizardly technological wizardry, and we're in business. So all right. We've accomplished that. I don't mind that they're securely in there. It works well. So the next disc, CD3, early scores. And you've got, let's see, Checkmate, TV series, How to Steal a Million, Penelope, um, Not With My Wife, Fitzwillie, um, Heidi, a television series, and then like CD4, Cinderella Liberty, a film by Mark Rydell, permission of something, oh, okay, um, and The River, so that's CDs three and four. You've got early scores. Um, CD five, 
the disaster movie trilogy. Oh, yes. Oh, I love these. Like Earthquake, the Poseidon Adventure, and the Towering Inferno. Oh, my God, weren't those fun. Wow. And, and you get, you know, extended suites from all of those. I, this is such a great collection. I love this. I mean, you know, I don't have to go looking for the complete individual scores. You get all like the best bits. It's so smart. Then we've got CD6. Um, CD6 is uh, Clint Eastwood and Robert Altman. We have The Iger Sanction. Remember that? Uh, the Long Goodbye and Images. Robert Altman. That's CD6. CD7. Westerns. The Cowboys, The Man Who Loved Cat Dancing. I remember that one. Some of these, I didn't even remember that he did the scores. It's amazing. You know, one of the beauties of this collection is that you get to see just how much he did and how versatile he was. Then The Missouri Breaks. That was fun, too. Okay, then we've got Jaws and Jaws 2. Oh, my God. In French, it's Les Dents de la Mer. <laughs> yes, The Teeth of the Sea. I got news for you. Jaws is so much better. There's some things that just don't work in French, you know, the teeth of the sea. They must be kidding. Anyway, you've got Jaws and Jaws 2. Okay, CD9. CD9 is Steven Spielberg. You get E.T., the extraterrestrial, and you get Always, which is one you don't know is on a bonus track. Hook from Captain Hook. Remember Hook? That was Peter Pan told from a different perspective. Then we've got, let's see, CD10 is Jurassic Park and bonus tracks, mine from Minority Report, one of Steven Spielberg's lesser known movies. Uh, CD11, Schindler's List. Okay, well, that one got flogged to death when it came out. One of you mentioned in the comments you weren't sure about that word, flogged, F-L-O-G-G-E-D, as in whipped, whipped, not flawed, F-L-A-W-E-D. So, you know, in case you were wondering, I apologize for the pronunciation. It's, they're close. They're similar in English. Um, Indiana Jones series, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Do Doom, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusades, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, Indiana Jones meets Gidget, Indiana Jones and the Submarine of Death. Anyway, yes, Indiana Jones. Then we've got the Oliver Stone American Triptych. I don't know these are triptychs, triptychs, triptiches, however you want to pronounce it. Born on the 4th of July, JFK and Nixon. I mean, just think about the versatility of this guy, the stuff that he's scoring for. And memorably, and, you know, I, I saw some very contemptuous comments about John Williams. Oh, he's the least original composer, blah, 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 blah. blah. It's just nonsense. Absolute nonsense. He is a craftsman and he can enter chameleon-like into any mood. And that's what a film score composer has to do. And one of the things, the great mistakes I have to say this, I have to rant for a second, that we make in our appreciation of artists is, is the, the rather vague term originality. Yes, originality is a, a virtue um, when a great composer makes a virtue of being original. <laughs> I mean, if that's an aspect of a composer's greatness, anybody can do something someone hasn't done before. You have to do it well, right? But not being original, but being great at your craft it's time we recognized being great at a craft for being great at a craft. I mean, just great at what he does and great at who he is. And, and that in itself is as great as any other great. You know, it's like comparing infinities. They're both infinities. One is more infinite than the other, even though they may not be the same size, according to mathematicians. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm just rambling here. I know, and I ramble, but we, we need to appreciate people for what they do wonderfully well. Remember H.L. Mencken's famous phrase, you know, all I, all I desire is competence in anything from adultery to zoology. Well, it's the same thing here. You know, great, great film composer is great at what they do. And we appreciate it for what they do, not for what they don't. Thank you. Next, Ron Howard Films, CD14. Far and Away. Yes, there's Far and Away. And let's see, we have more Ron Howard. No, then we have Sidney Pollock and Martin Ritt. We have Sabrina. That was a beautiful score. That was a wonderful score. Pete and Tilly and Stanley and Iris. Well, that's, that's, those are cute. And Rogers and Hammerstein and Lerner and Lowe. No, I'm just kidding. Then we have John Batham and Brian De Palma. Dracula. 
Oh, yes, that was fun. And The Fury, that Brian De Palma, that was fun. Then we have single film collaborations. Uh, Family Plot, Alfred Hitchcock. Remember that one? Black Sunday, John Frankenheimer. Monsignor was Frank Perry. Sleepers was Barry Levinson. Uh, Seven Years in Tibet, Jean-Jacques Arnaud. And Angela's Ashes, Alan Parker. Then we've got Anne Sophie Mooder and John Williams across the stars. Who cares? Um, sorry. Uh, concert works. Prelude and Fugue with the Los Angeles Philharmonic. Sinfonietta for Wind Ensemble with the Eastman Wind Ensemble. The Violin Concerto with Anne Sophie Mooder. Okay, that's fine. Um, at least it's not little sniglet thingies. And Elegy for Cello and Orchestra with Bruno Della Pelaire, the Berlin Philharmonic. It would be nice if we had some other of his concert works in here, I think, because he wrote quite a few of them, and some of them are quite good. And then we have Songs, Covers, and New Readings. So this is like a whole selection of other things that, you know, of songs and goodies and whatnot. So there you go. And then you have, like I said, this very nice booklet, sort of coffee table thing. I mean, this is, this is a beautifully produced set of CDs. Absolutely first class. And a, a wonderful, wonderful, like I said, retrospective of John Williams and his work over the centuries. Um, uh, I love it. And I just wanted you to know what's out there. I mean, this is announced with very little fanfare, I think. I, I sort of stumbled across it. And... I don't know who's going to talk about it. I mean, maybe in film score, you know, chat rooms and things like that, people will, will you know, complain about the selection because as a classical music person, um, I'm not in a position to, to nitpick the details of his career as a film music composer and scream about what should have been in and what is out and what didn't make it. I wish he, they had done more of his TV tunes. I really do. I mean, if I have to say, you know, Lost in Space, that kind of stuff, it would be nice to have more of his work for television. I'm not complaining. It's really, really a beautiful, beautiful set. So think about it. Think about it, you folks. You may you may find it worth worth investing in. Keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me and take care.